All right, we've talked about the values of extreme programming. <clears throat> now we need to talk about the principles, which are the bridge between the values and the actual practices of, of the process. Um, there, are, there are quite a few principles. Um, now the first one, uh, most importantly, is humanity. And the Beck's point here is that people develop software. And at the core then of XP is really dealing with coming up with systems and a way of working together as a team of people to produce the software. Uh, that's really what he's getting at and he's trying to solve. Um, and so there's a whole set of things under humanity that we care about. Um, we care about the, this notion of basic safety. You could sort of say, you know, you know we've, we have to eat. We have hunger. And, you know, really part of this is probably the notion of uh, being careful about uh, or being concerned about job loss. You know, so if you've got people on the team uh, and they're worried about their security and are they safe here on this team, um, you know, are they going to lose their job? Are there other things that they're concerned about? Just like basic human functions, you're, you're at a loss. Um, so you've got you to be, be aware of those and meet them. Likewise, people, people need a sense of accomplishment. All right. They need to have a feeling that they can actually are uh, contributing to society. That they're doing something good and worthwhile. Uh, I think a lot of this comes back to, you know, uh, is the software of any value? I mean, too often you might feel like I got paid to build this and it got the project got canceled. So what have I really contributed? You know, there's there's all those sorts of feelings. Um, likewise, is is my company good? Is my company ethical? Am I doing things that are actually helping the world? Um, those things do matter to people. Uh, you're going to get a higher the notion would be you're going to have a higher functioning team if they are able to have senses of accomplishment. And it's not just a society, but it's a personal personal accomplishment uh, on, on the project as well. People need to feel like they belong. They need to really feel part of a group. Um, we all like to be members of a good team, and that team is successful. Uh, we, we, we need to be, be connected to, to it. Um, people need growth. So they need, as they work on the software, they need chances to develop their skills, their perspectives on the world, and so forth. They, need to, they, they can't just feel like I'm stuck on nothing. I just keep doing exactly the same thing over and over again, and there's no growth we, we naturally, we want to learn things and become better. Um, there's a basic notion of intimacy that's necessary. Um, this is not, uh, this is not intimacy as in uh, a couple of two people in their life. This is the notion that we want to understand the people we work with. Um, and be understood by them, sort of at a deeper level, uh, rather than just "Hi, how you doing?" We want to we want to have a sense of connection with them. Now, um, one of the things that's interesting to me is a lot of this stuff that he's here. There's a book um, called First Break All the Rules," and it has a lot of this sort of stuff in it as well. And this that this first break all the rules came from a, a study of uh, people in the workplace and what do you really need as a manager to make them successful and for example one of the nice things is that they put like belonging as you know each person on a team needs to feel like you know or at a company needs to feel like they've got at least one close friend there and so if you think about that you know think about the people you're working with think about yourself and your past inter interactions like is there someone at work that you're like that person's like my work friend, at least. You know, you've got to have something. Otherwise, there's not that, that connection. Um, and so there's a, we know this, you're going to need these sorts of things 
uh, to be a healthy, good team. Um, now, there's one thing that he mentions here that I think is useful to, 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 to talk about. It's that with the intimacy aspect, though, he's like, this is not about you bringing your private life to work. Okay. Um, so he's talk, he talks about sometimes some people want to use work as a, as a way to solve this other, this other part of their life. And he's, he's a big believer in, no, like, this is intimacy at the professional level, um, not intimacy at the personal level. Uh, level. We don't want to really know the details of, of your private life. Um, we want to understand you and work with you as a fellow software uh, developer, not, not what happens behind closed doors. And so he actually breaks this out nicely. Um, and he, he, he views, he's got three levels for himself, the way that he breaks up uh, sort of information and sharing. And so this is his personal philosophy. And so he, he sort of says, well, there's some things that I only share with my spouse. There's only, then there are other things that he's willing to share with people uh, that you trust really closely. And then there's public stuff. And you can kind of think about that. And, you know, it doesn't have to be a spouse. It could be, you know, uh, your very, very best friend or uh, maybe a, a parent or something along those lines. Not everyone has a spouse or a significant other. But this notion of like, there's some things that are so private that, so he kind of has this notion in his mind, um, you know, and it sort of gives it, but clearly intimacy does not mean you should start sharing your private life. All right. So um, that's our first principle. Um, there's a whole bunch more. We'll not go into them as much depth. The, again, dealing with uh, XP, uh, clearly one of Beck's focuses is on people. Um, and so humanity is first on his list there. Uh, next on the list is economics. And, you know, basically money does matter in software. Um, and perhaps the biggest principle here is sooner is better. You know, you, you get that software out there, it starts making money. So time to delivery is really important. So we need to have um, methods that allow us to get our software done quickly, that we get value out to customers really quickly. Uh, next up, mutual benefit. All right. And I think the best way to to put this uh, is win-win, is okay? Or he even says win-win-win, you know? But the idea is that every activity should be benefiting everyone. Um, we need to find something in here that, uh, you know, when we do it, it's a win for me, it's a win for you, it's a win for the customer, it's a win for the team. Uh, we we're really looking to find solutions that benefit everyone rather than benefit one person or one, one part of the organization only. Uh, one of his examples that he uses is producing vast amounts of documentation in your code so that someone somewhere someday will be able to read it and fully understand exactly what you are doing. Um, and he's like, that's counterproductive. It's a huge burden on me without necessarily any necessarily known benefit to other people. Um, now, certainly we've seen in the course feedback, mid-project feedback, some students have been said, we, we need you to comment more. Um, I think that what the real message is, is turn up the communication level so that we can understand what, what the work is that you're doing is. So one way that students have expressed that is we want more comments in your code, but there could be other ways to actually be doing that communication. Kent Beck talks about, uh, you know, with really good set of tests, that's the way he documents what the code is really supposed to be doing and what's, how is it working. Um, and of course, he's this big, we're working together and communicating all the time. And so that's another way that he's doing it. Um, but we, we need to find some way um, to communicate in this software. But that's his example for mutual benefit. In other words, he do, don't, don't do things that are only uh, one-sided. Um, he has a principle of self-similarity. 
uh, this is probably best understood that he's basically like, there are certain patterns and there are ways to solve problems and we can find solutions at many different scales and contexts. It's, it's a sort of, it's not the, it's not the easiest principle to explain or understand in fact. So we're going to move on. Um, next principle is a principle of improvement, um, which is basically, you know, work to make your team better. So we're always striving to improve our team, have the team work better. Diversity. Uh, another team-based principle, which is you need different people on your team um, with different perspectives and skill sets and so far, so forth and so on. Here, I'll just say perspectives there. Purse. Anyway, um, in other words, having everyone think the same is no good. We need those different ideas to, to, to really find the good solutions. Um, reflection. This is, we need to always, we need to be working to reflect upon uh, what works and why. What is happening? Why, what makes the team effective? What software solutions are good? We need to be, we need to reflect. We can't just do, we need to be, and this is, I think this ties a lot back to, to feedback. Um, talks about flow as a principle. There needs to be this uh, steady flow of value coming out of the team. There needs to be software constantly being produced and value delivered to the customer. Um, he ha talks about the principle of opportunity. I would probably say opportunity. What he really means there is, you know, turn problems into uh, ways to to gain advantage or, you know, take lemons and turn them into lemonade or something like that. Um, I'm going through these principles rather quickly. Uh, I think the, the, the point being is that, yes, they're a bit more concrete than the values if we think about them. Um, they almost give us a way to sort of, uh, to another perspective on the values in my mind, but, uh, there's another uh, principle, the principle of redundancy. Um, you know, basically that your software process, uh, and in lots that we do, uh, you know, shouldn't rely upon one way. To solve issues. So an example given is finding bugs. We shouldn't really have only one way to find bugs. We probably need lots of different methodologies. Uh, you know, we can think about, you know, our unit testing, our integration testing, our end-to-end -end testing, our bug bashes, you know, all sorts of things because it's all really important to find those bugs and get rid of those defects. If we only relied upon one way we're probably going to have bugs slip through. So we need redundancy in our processes and that we shouldn't really get rid of things unless we truly know, for example, that this, pro so for example, like with bug uh, finding, that this process, if we remove it, we will, it, there, it, in other words, this process is finding exactly the same bugs that this process does. So those are totally redundant and we shouldn't have them. But if, there's, if they're just simply overlapping and we're still finding new bugs, we, we really need to keep, keep the, that model. Um, here's the principle of failure. Um, and he's really, he's getting, this kind of ties back a little bit to the courage aspect, but that, you know, that if in doubt, as you're working on stuff, go ahead, do something to fail and you're gonna learn from it. So don't be afraid about failure. You have to proceed knowing that you will at times fail. 
Okay. Um, we have the principle of quality. And here, his message is that higher quality for a team translates to a faster project. So the more, his contention is, and what he has found in practice is, the more effort that we spend on getting our quality high as we work on things, overall the faster the project actually runs. So while you might think it's slowing you down to do all this testing, to do these reviews of your code and so forth, the reality is at the end of the day, you are more productive and you've actually delivered more code in the same amount of time that that works, okay? Um, he wants you to take baby steps to get places, all right? Um, you're not gonna do all of this in one uh, big transformation and become a perfect extreme programming team overnight. It's gonna take time. Um, also, likewise, to understand that we get places I, I think by taking small steps, and one of my always things that I like to come back to with this is, um, you know, you go off and you're in a hike or you're doing something with mountain climbing, and it's really amazing to me. Like, you know, you start off and you take one step and another step and another step, and you know, before long, you know, an hour has gone by, you've just done a bunch of small steps, but you turn around and you go, whoa, whoa, there's the car down there. It's like, whoa, we've made it this far. And you know, before long, another hour and another hour, and you're on the top of the hill or the mountain, and you're just blown away that you are actually able to accomplish things through a bunch of small incremental steps. Um, take the baby steps. It'll get you really far in this world. Uh, don't worry about taking gigantic steps in one, one fell swoop. And his final principle is accepted responsibility. And this really is, is that people need to, uh, you don't force responsibility upon people like saying, you're responsible for, for doing this thing. It's people need to sign up for things. They need to commit to things. They need to take, say, that's my task, uh, that I'm going to be doing it, and I tell you it's going to take me this long, and I'm going to get it done in that amount of time. Um, all right, and that's a similar uh, thing that we, we see over and over again, that you need to actually, for the team members, we don't, we don't tell to do things certain ways and whatnot. We want really for us to work as a team, for us to figure out what needs to be done, and then for people to agree that that's what needs to be done, basically, and then to commit to it, and we all work together on that. All right, so that wraps up covering uh, Extreme Programming's principles.